What is this? It looks so strange, right? Well, this is a semiconductor microchip wafer. And look how cool it looks, right? And this is the same wafer under a digital microscope and we can see all sorts of elements and parts. It is made out of silicon and it contains millions and millions and millions of transistors. But they are so small we can't even see them under a laboratory microscope. You need something such as an AFM microscope to do that. Basically this is nanometer technology. And in this video I want to go step by step on how to go from rocks or basically sand to silicon wafer to microtechnology mask exposure and creating integrated circuits. So basically how semiconductor microchips are made. I also want to use my powerful laser engraver and maybe expose some chips and transistors and see inside them. I hope my laser is powerful enough to do that. So let's get started. My new project was requiring some flexible PCBs, and PCBWay was the right solution for that. And the order process is so simple, just go to PCBWay.com and select flexible PCBs. Upload your Gerber files as always and select your settings directly on their website. You also have the option for rigid flex PCBs if you want, and other settings for the color, the thickness, the gold immersion and so on. I received my PCBs in just a couple of days and they look amazing. The tracks are very small but even so, PCBWay did a great job and they have capabilities that go even lower than that and you could check them on their website. So try yourself their services for flexible PCBs like mine and like that you can complete your awesome project. And check more for other services for prototyping PCBs, automatic assembly, SMD stencil and much more on PCBWay.com. What's up my friends, welcome back. I bought this wafer to use as a reference for my video. I don't even know from what microchip it is. It could be a memory, maybe a microcontroller or some sort of driver, but who knows. But as you can see we have some sort of repeating pattern. And that's because microchips are not made one by one. To speed up the process, reduce costs and use the entire area at once, Microchips are made on a silicon wafer like this one, or it could be even bigger. Then the wafer is cut to size, and each microchip would go into its enclosure. For example, I also bought these other chips that have the enclosure open, so we could see inside it. And this time we have only one microchip instead of an entire wafer. In order to protect the chip and also add external connectors, the foundry closes the chip inside of this black epoxy material and also adds the metal pins. Ok, so let's start from the beginning. It all starts with one of the most abundant materials on earth, sand. And to be more specific, silica or silicon. Microchips are made out of silicon, but in nature usually the sand has silicon together with oxygen and we need pure silicon. For that they merge the silica sand with carbon and heat it up to extreme temperatures to remove the oxygen. So after complex chemical and physical processes we achieve pure silicon, 99.9%. When the silicon is melted they submerge a rod in and out just as a candle process. Because each time the rod is submerged in the melted silicon it gets bigger and bigger. And that's how they create a pure crystalline silicon ingot that is called a bull. Once we have the bull, it's time to create the wafers. So using special sauce, they cut the bull into very fine wafers of clean pure silicon. So now we have a brand new wafer with nothing on it. It's time for the next part, which is creating the transistors. For that we start with the design of the chip. Microchips designing software are very expensive. For example, during my university time, I had a chance to use Cadence software. So you start with a circuit of transistors. And then you pass that to the layout, representing the different layers of the chip of those transistors. As an example, let's say that we make just a simple NPN transistor. 
So for that the layout would be something like this, representing the N, the P and the N area, the gate metal connection and so on. For the next step the wafer is introduced inside of a reactor chamber and a thin layer of oxide is placed on top. This is non-conductive for now. Then for the next step the wafer is filled with a photosensible solution that hardens under light. So using the layout designed before the founder creates a mask. And that mask is placed in front of usually UV light so it creates a pattern of the layout. But this mask is very big compared with the nanometric size of the transistors. So usually a set of mirrors and lenses are used to focus and reduce the mask light to the exact nanometric size. So now the photosensible solution hardens with the exact shape of the layout. The wafer is now submerged into cleaning solution to remove the mask that is not solid. And just like that we created the mask over the wafer. Then it comes the etching process, using a chemical etching or plasma process. So the next step is to add other chemicals or a plasma chamber to remove the oxide that is not exposed. Like that we create the channels in the bulk oxide on top of the silicone. Then we have a deposition process that is made inside of a reaction chamber. The wafer is introduced inside of this reactor and a small layer of those silicon, polysilicon, metals and so on is applied. Let's say that we apply a n-type doping. After that the mask is removed and we are left with this. We have seen on some previous videos of mine that silicon must be doped in order to conduct electrons, usually with boron or phosphor to create a p-type or an n-type silicon. So please watch that video to understand more about doping and why silicon is a semiconductor. Anyway, for our wafer it comes another process of doping. Another mask is created, but now we cover the channels we have created before. The uncovered part is filled with a different silicon layer inside of a reactor. And now we dope the silicon with boron and create a p-type silicon. After that the mask is removed once again and just like that we have created an MPN junction or better said a BJT transistor. Obviously in real life we have a lot of other chemical and physical processes, more than just one layer is created, metal deposition, doping, different kind of silicone and so on. A microchip could end up having up to 14 layers or even more and more than 300 different processes have to be made to achieve that including heating up the wafer to more than 1000 degrees. So in the same way we can create one layer, deposit another, another mask, remove the excess, another deposition, yet another mask and so on, creating many many layers and by that the so called integrated circuit which would be very complex. So we have passed from sand to pure silicon ingot, we have made the wafer, created a design and pass that to a mask. Apply the mask with UV light at a nanoscale size and etch the silicone. We deposit other materials and dope the material and we get the finished wafer. Since the process is very expensive and must be made in a very very clean room, instead of just making one chip at a time, the design is multiplied and on a single wafer hundreds of these chips are made at a time. And speaking of that clean room, the foundry room is actually called the clean room. It is hundreds of times cleaner than a surgery room. Just a few particles of dust per cubic meter. And why is that? Well because even a small grain of dust would be bigger than hundreds of transistors, so if that grain of dust ends up on the wafer it could cover a lot of those transistors. So very expensive filtering systems are used and the workers are always clean and using protective clothes. Ok the next step is to cut the chip to size. So the wafer is cut into all the separated chips. Then the chip is placed inside of an enclosure for easier use and protection. Using a very fine soldering tip, a small wire is soldered between the external pins and the chip connections. Actually on this chip because it's exposed we can see those metal connections. Let's take a closer look under the microscope. 
we can see how each pin is connected to the chip using very fine wires. And here I'm using my laser engraver to remove the epoxy on top and expose the chip inside. So let's take a look. And this is yet another chip, this is a 555 timer. And this is inside of an operational amplifier for example. This is inside of an Arduino microcontroller, the Atmega 328. And it's quite cool to see, right? Have in mind that we can only see the main blocks. The transistors are too small for the microscope. They are on the scale of nanometers. Ok, and the final part is obviously to put a chip under test, using special testing machines. And that's it! That's how you can get from sand to microchips. Obviously we have a lot more steps in between, but these were the main ones. The silicon ingot to wafer, UV mask layer extraction or deposition, doping, wafer cut, packaging and final tests. Have in mind that it cost millions of dollars to design and make a microchip, but since they make so many, the price could go lower to just a few cents per chip. I hope that you like this video and that you have learned something new. If so, consider giving me a like or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey, so one more video that ends, I hope that you like it. Ok, so listen, if you want to buy my merch, my t-shirts, you have the links below for my shop, and I promise that I will make more designs. And also maybe you would comment below which one you like more and what more designs you would like to see because in that way I could start designing them and post my new t-shirts. So thank you for all the support and I'll see you in the next video.